Now okay. we're going to move on. Uh, we have a report from the Agitation and Propaganda Department led by Director Akile Anayi, themed Agitation and Propaganda, a function of African state power. We say in the party that Agitprop is the heartbeat of the party and movement. Everyone can appreciate the significance of Director Akile and the Department of, of Agitprop. Let's give a warm welcome to Director Akile and her Agitprop team. Uru. Oh, Huru, Huru comrades. Well, I just first want to really appreciate this incredible plenary and just salute the whole program for today, as well as the last two days. It's just been incredibly overwhelming and amazing. So um, yeah, and I also just wanna recognize before we get started, the forces who will be um, a part of this presentation with me, an incredible team that I work with day in and day out. I'm in the Central Department of Agitation and Propaganda. That's Comrade Matsumela Odom, who is our Director of Cadre Development, as well as our Western Regional um, Agiprop representative. We have Comrade Soliana, who is our Managing Editor for the Burning Spear newspaper, as well as our Transitioning Northern Region um, Agiprop representative. We have Comrade Maiza, who is our NTU Program Coordinator, as well as our Midwest Region Agiprop representative. And we also have Comrades Lisa and Sandy from the African People's Solidarity Committee who work under the leadership of myself and the African People's Socialist Party to turn over their skills as well as go for the resources to turn it back over into this department into our various institutions. So these comrades make it happen every single day. So I really wanna salute them. Also, we will have a guest um, uh, speaker with us today. So I'm not gonna let y'all know who that is, but um, <clears throat> uh, they move mountains, I'll say that. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. The Department of Agitation and Propaganda is rapidly transforming to respond to the needs of this period of the crisis of imperialism, ushered in through the chairman and the APSP's relentless leadership toward African redemption. In this report, we aim to show how Agiprop is working to advance the mandates and resolutions stemming from our seventh Congress and beyond. Next. So Chairman Amalia Shatella, we have to salute this profound leader who's provided political and ideological leadership for the African freedom struggle for over 50 years since his time as an organizer with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee in 1966. His leadership has resulted in coherence to the Black Power movement, something we struggled to gain following the counterinsurgency against the Black Revolution of the 60s. We want to salute Chairman for never stepping one foot back, for assuming the responsibility to revive the African Revolution so that we may know freedom in our lifetime. In recognition of the party turning 50 years old this year, we had to acknowledge that the present discussions around colonialism, reparations, and other concepts didn't just appear in the last couple of years. In fact, articles, essays, books, and more that are finally talking about the colonial question and other things is evidence of the influence of African internationalism over the course of our 50 year history. It is no exaggeration to state that the party has ushered in the current period where African people find themselves positioned and capable of waging struggle against the colonizer and their system. It was the introduction of the theory of African internationalism to our movement that served as a groundbreaking necessity, understanding colonialism as the mode of production that led to the birth of capitalism and the resultant European wealth has provided our struggle with a to what end. We are no longer bogged down with philosophical idealism, forced to struggle against concepts like racism and white supremacy as the colonizer continues to rape, brutalize, and exploit our Africa and African people everywhere. It is this development that has led to the types of successes experienced by the Department of Agitation and Propaganda in the year of 2021. Next. There is no question that this system doesn't have much longer to go, but it doesn't mean we are able to feel comfortable. The crisis of this social system should be seen as an opening to deepen it further. The Department of Agitation and Propaganda plays a critical role in this. As stated by the chairman in the 2021 political report to the second seventh Congress plenary, all of our work is influenced by the incredibly deep crisis of imperialism. When we say the crisis is existential, we are at the same time positioning ourselves for the eventuality of seizing the power of self-government. We are positioning ourselves as, as the strategic tool of the African working class and toilers of the world to destroy colonialism and unleash the forces of socialist revolution globally. 
The Department of Agitation and Propaganda must prepare for this event as a catalyst and as part of the global infrastructure for international black power under the leadership of the African working class. The development of Agiprop requires its capacity to envision itself to be an arm of an independent global African working class state. This is what carrying out the seven Congress mandates and resolutions must ultimately facilitate. This outcome is implicit in all the work all the time, but the liberated future that Agiprop helps to project to our party and our people in the world must be visible to Agiprop itself. Agiprop recognizes it will have to play a major role in promoting and raising up the 50 year history of our party. Shortly after our plenary, we will be rolling out a series of materials to be used for a propaganda campaign carried out throughout the regional structure. This will include POA templates for community events that a local party unit, organization, and region will be able to take, modify when necessary, making them capable of carrying out events that will celebrate our 50-year anniversary while also building the party. Next. In 2020, the University of Florida digitized every print issue of the spear in our possession. They have included our spears into their digital collection. This has led to the party being able to access its own history. This will increasingly become the case as we develop an in-house capacity to digitize other media forms. In 2014, Burning Spear Media partnered with, I'm sorry, in 2021, Burning Spear Media partnered with UF to submit a grant application to digitize the 40 plus years catalog of the archived audio and video recordings of our movement. Pending our victory in securing it, we will be able to digitize hundreds of hours worth of archived audio and video. However, our digitizing work doesn't rely solely on securing grants. We will investigate different means to make the party's archived history accessible to our party and the rest of the world. We, of course, will be using our own institutions, which contribute to our 50 year history, to promote the party and the chairman at every turn. In fact, promoting the chairman as the leader of the African nation and the genuinely socialist international revolution, the revolutionary, will be turned into a major campaign of the entire party, as we will be using many, as many methods as possible, from scorched earth initiatives to social media presence amplification, extending our reach beyond anything we've done up to now. We will conduct special programming on Black Power 96 radio, including special episodes of Black Power talks, airing PSAs and speeches. We will ensure that each issue of the Burning Spear highlights our 50 year history. Articles, culture submissions, photo spreads and milestone pieces will be part of the ways our paper will reflect the 50th anniversary. We will produce banners and posters to be used to, to be added to our physical stores and local offices, and we'll make sure our online platforms feature content regarding our 50 year history, including our main websites, HTMLs and our social media pages. We are extremely excited for the creativity that will be unleashed through this process of promoting our 50th anniversary. As mentioned in the chairman's political report to the third seven Congress plenary, much of the work Agiprop will be producing and distributing will require the full effort and participation of our party regions throughout the world. So I'm calling on you already to assume the task of raising up the chairman and our party's glorious 50 years. The department is certain that through our efforts, our party and movement will experience the confidence associated with being part of an organization with such a glorious history and sturdy foundation. Next. So as we transition to the Department of Agitation and Propaganda's institution reports, we appropriately begin with the Burning Spear newspaper, the oldest institution of our movement. Recently celebrating 53 years of continued print production, the Spear in the year 2021 made some tremendous leaps by a very dedicated staff of party members and volunteers. We not only got every issue out on time every month, they were expeditiously shipped to our distributors before the first of the month to give our distributors the full 30 days to sell, sell, sell. In this report, we'll review how we responded to the mandates presented by the chairman in the 2021 political report and speak about the things we have not accomplished and our approach to overturning that. To give this report, we have comrade Soliana Bikel, who represents one of our victories. One of our goals in the department was to recruit a managing editor, a second in command for this institution, and we did that. Introducing Soliana to deliver this report. Uhuru. 
Uhuru, thank you, Director Ikue. Uhuru comrades, my name is Soliana, Managing Editor for the Burning Spear newspaper, and as stated, I'll be delivering this portion of the report. I first want to start off by recognizing the leadership of Chairman Amalia Shatella and Deputy Chair Onazani Shatella and the entire National Central Committee, which functions as the editorial board for the Spear. We want to start by acknowledging the forces that make up our relentless Spear staff. Um, we have Director Akile, the Editor-in-Chief. We have Nia Benga, the political editor, and myself as the managing editor. Uh, next, please. We also have Matt Tamela, uh, staff writer, Sandy, layout editor, Honey Blue, senior proofreader. We have Kota, who's also a senior proofreader, and, and, and Yendu, uh, our photo editor. Next slide. <clears throat> we have Sayura, who's also a proofreader, Matt's proofreader. And not pictured, we have Abo, Anna, and Clara, who are all proofreaders, and Gas Mask and LM, who work on the layout team. We want to salute these com comrades who, without our victories, would not have been possible. The Spear celebrated 53 years of continued production in December of 2021. The founding of the Spear predates the birth of the party itself. This, in fact, and this in, is, is in fact in and of itself reflects the significance of this journal. It has always served as an organizing tool and a lifeline to the African Revolution during the period where our movement was under military assault by the US government. The spirit continued to reflect the struggles of our people and in the same breath was instrumental in the development of the theory of African internationalism. It was not only a reporting tool, it was simultaneously providing analysis for the problems faced by our people and the movement. This history is what compels our efforts today to produce a powerful, potent piece of propaganda that will continue to be a crucial part of organizing every African worker down in the colonies in which we live. Next. <clears throat> We've provided ongoing trainings in writing for and selling the spear, equipping the members of our movement to tell the stories of our communities. One of the ways that the sphere has won greater, more productive participation in its production process, as well as written contribution by party members was through the APSB and ME columns in which party members are encouraged to tell their story and speak to why they joined the party. We also trained and deployed field reporters to report for the NPDEM convention, as well as the BIB coalition march on the White House. We will continue to do this for all of our major events. Another one of the ways that the Spear has won greater, more productive participation in its production process, as well as con contribution by the colonized African population in general, is through the revitalized drum and spear column of the Spear, in which the voices and cultural talents of African prisoners were published and showcased. This is an example from the July and August Spears that celebrated Black August and the movement to free all political prisoners. And this was also, this was also the month the Spear successfully established and sustained the donor program for Black August. Next slide. Cultural work like poems and reviews of African music were increasingly published and showcased in the Spear by party members as well as non-party members. Here we have an example from the March 2021 Spear celebrating African women. Kamar Matsumela wrote a, view of the, a, a review of the album Freedom in the Mix produced by our very own Haiti editor, Eliki Ngoma, as well as reviews of films like Judas and the Black Messiah and Small Acts, providing African internationalist views of popular culture. These types of reviews should inspire creativity among our staff and writers in our movement. Comrade Alikia also contributed a review of Fresh Lab Wadezil, an African singer-songwriter in Haiti, and his work Monde Yo Pumwen. When Alikia shared the article on her Instagram page, it was actually reposted by the artist himself. <clears throat> We've also called on regions to report on the work happening where they are. Through this process, we've been we've seen more reports coming in detailing the work on the front lines. We want to salute the northern region and let me now she get to the next slide. Sorry. Um, we've also called on the regions to report on the work happening where they are. Um, through this process, we've seen more reports coming in detailing the work on the front lines. Um, we want to salute the Northern and Western region for continuously submitting articles documenting the different struggles and victories taking place where we are. We've received and printed reports on impedum branches being formed, party units being consolidated, community struggles like the Bethesda uh, Cemetery struggle and more. We've also received a full spread on the bread, peace and black power campaign happening in occupied Azania, connecting our party to itself. In our writings training, we make it a point to show incoming writers how to use the 14 point platform as a reference point for the articles. This ensures that our articles point to a to what end and the line of African internationalism permeates the analysis. Our standard columns continue to con contribute to reports on our work in our major organizations and institutions and provide ongoing analysis about pressing questions. Those columns include 
Point of the Spear, edited by Chairman Omali Shatella, Office of the Deputy Chair, edited by Deputy on Chair Onazanea Shatella, Kinshasa International, edited by Secretary General Louise Kinshasa, Harriet's Daughters, edited by Annual President Yejide Ornmila, African Resistance Now, edited by Dexter Milumwengu and President Kalambayi Andinet, the All African People's Development and Empowerment Project, edited by Chuo Niso Luzolo and Dr. Aisha Fields, Africa, edited by Director Tafari Mugheri, Haiti, edited by Aliki Angoma, and White Solidarity with Black Power, edited by APSC Chair Penny Hess. Outstanding for the spear is surrounding the question of spear distribution, both within the US and internationally. Despite the dynamic spears we have produced, and while our sales were up 14% compared to 2020, our goal to be distributing 10,000 spears by the end of 2021 was not achieved. We have made continuous struggles within the regions, with the regions within the U.S. to increase their sales, providing uh, providing spear sellers training for those who are unfamiliar with how to go about selling their community. And we also initiated a reporting form several years ago, but it still remains an issue to receive regular reports from the regions. Through the process of the Army of Propagandists, which will be discussed later on, we tend to speak to the mandates put forward from the chairman about how selling the sphere must be considered as part of the essential work of every party member. We do want to acknowledge the regions who compiled with our directives to increase sales in their areas. They mobilized the forces in their region, submitted regular reports, and even increased the amount of stores in their area carrying the sphere. That was the Western and Northern region, salute to Matsumala in the West and Dexter in the North. We also did not resolve the issue of getting the sphere out internationally. We did not investigate how to make this happen despite the growing necessity to get this on the ground to the comrades to increase our political and ideological influence in the various places the party is building. By the time of this report, however, we have identified a service package hopper that will allow us, for, that will allow us to ship the sphere at an affordable rate internationally. Increasing our, our printing to 10,000 spirits, as well as shipping both in the US and internationally, requires the spirit uh, be economically self-efficient. The primary revenue stream for the paper is distribution, which means the task to win our party to sell the spirit is a matter of urgency. I would now like to turn the, the report over to comrade Lisa Watson to discuss uh, burning spear publications. Uhuru Lisa. Uhuru Soliana, thank you, and Uhuru comrades. My name is Lisa Watson. I am a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, and I serve as the project coordinator for Burning Spear Publications under the leadership of Director Akile Anayi. It is such an honor to be a member of the Department of Agitation and Propaganda under the leadership of the party as part of the responsibility of the African People's Solidarity Committee to turn over all of the stolen resources to the African Revolution. And I would also like to salute our leadership, Chairman Omalia Shatella, Deputy Chair Ona Zinea Shatella, the entire NCC of National Central Committee of the party, and my direct leadership, APSC Chair Penny Hess. So here is the 2021 Burning Spear Publications Report. Uh, next slide, please. Um, we wanna first acknowledge the volunteers that worked we were, that we worked with toward the beginning of the year. Initially, this team came together to work on the reprint of Reparations Now, which was started, and then they also contributed their time and skills to help produce and even translate the pamphlets that we were able to publish this year. So in 2021, in a joint project with the Office of the Chairman, Burning Spear Publications republished four pamphlets. They were Obama, the Elections and the Struggle for Justice, Peace, a Better Life and Black Power, Black Community Control of the Police, The Ballot and the Bullet, and The New Period, A Time for Party Building. Next slide. And re-released four vintage pamphlets, Me and the African People's Socialist Party, a personal testimony by Alvalita Donaldson, Forward the Revolutionary African National Democratic Struggle, Smash Slander and Build Principled Unity, and Report from the Mountain. Burning Star Publications has not yet completed the project to republish Reparations Now, the book that includes a report and testimonies from the party's first international tribunal on reparations that was held in 1982. We did create an index of the archive materials needed for the book and made some progress on locating and digitizing those materials. Next slide. 
Burning Spear Publications increased sales income by 20% over 2020. However, our goal at the beginning of 2021 was to double sales. So we summed up the main reasons we did not achieve that goal were one, we did not succeed in completing the publication of that new edition of Reparations Now. And two, we didn't carry out a strong promotion strategy. There were some promotions, but they were limited in size and scope due in large part to our human resources capacity. So promotions and building the Burning Spear Media Promotions Team through the NTU Volunteer Brigade Program are priority goals for 2022. Um, all right. And then some promotions efforts that we did in 2021 include print, uh, creating a print version of the Burning Spear Publications catalog so that movement literature agents could approach local bookstores and libraries about carrying Burning Spear Publications titles. Next slide, please. And Burning Spear Media launched live sales in November holding three sales so far for Black Friday, Cyber Mon Monday, and on December 22nd, which was the 53rd anniversary of the Burning Spear newspaper. And the live sales um, features new items, deals on book bundles, and rare collectibles from the archive for auction. So the goals for 2022 are, one, to recruit, build the Burning Spear Publications team, including volunteers to work on production, promotion, and distribution. Two, to publish uh, the 2022 political report, Relentless as a Book List, the new edition of Reparations Now, and the next step of that is going to be an archive intensive scheduled for early March, and six new pamphlets, and we've identified what those are. So they include African internationalism, um, the question of the nation. So those two things are chapters from an uneasy equilibrium and that are also in Vanguard. And then um, we wanna publish some other things including African internationalism versus Pan-Africanism, um, which was by Luezi Kinshasa, Secretary General Luezi, and um, some other pieces by Secretary General Luezi as well, including on neocolonialism in Africa and on reparations. And um, we also want to publish uh, or work at, in my role as APSC Agitprop, working under the party's Department of Agitprop to produce pamphlets of Chairwoman Penny's um, presentations as well. So a third goal is to develop, promote, and sell new products that include posters, greeting cards, et cetera, that promote African national identity and African internationalism as has been called for in political reports by the chairman. Um, a fourth goal is to produce promotional materials and build the promotion capacity, including continuing the monthly live sale events and completing the revamp of burningspearmarketplace.com. Um, five, to expand distribution to college campuses or, or to more college campuses and get into book wholesalers. And six, to develop an auctions and collectibles sub revenue stream because there's a lot of stuff in the archives um, that people are paying a lot of money for outside of, you know, the movement is not getting that. So we want to get into that market. And let's see. Okay, next slide. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Yeah. Um, we're, and I would now like to turn it over to Director Kile, who will introduce the next slide. Um, Black Power 96 Radio's report. Oh, for real. Thank you, uh, comrades Lisa and Soliana. So actually to open up this report, I would like to introduce our special guest. He is a nominee for Comrade of the Year, my favorite DJ, your favorite DJ, DJ station manager of Black Power 96, Eddie Maltzby. Hooroo, Mr. Eddie. Yeah, hooroo. Come on. Hey, how you doing? Good. How you doing? <clears throat> great, great, great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And I want to say to the people, thank you for having me. Hooroo, comrades. How are you doing this afternoon? My name is Eddie Maltzby, manager of Black Power 96.3 FM radio station located here in St. Petersburg, Florida. We are under the nonprofit, the African People's Education and Defense Fund. You already know is the baddest nonprofit 
in the world, man. And again, uh, most of you might know me as DJ Eddie with Decorate the Kile said, uh, world's best blind DJ. I don't see nothing, but I feel everything. And I'm feeling this plenary, man. It's, it was a wonderful day. A uh, couple of last couple of days has been uh, absolutely uh, off, just awesome. And I first want to give thanks and uh, salute the chairman O'Malley Yosatella, his leadership, and uh, of course, Deputy Chair Ona Zene Yosatella. Want to say hey to her because sometimes I get that wrong. And the chairman called me and said, DJ Eddie, it's not Zene, it's Zene. I said, okay, I got you. <laughs> so I want to say hey to the chairman and, and for all he does uh, to building this institution and uh, deputy chair for all that she does for building this institution and this nonprofit, uh, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, which we are under the umbrella here at Black Power 96.3 FM radio. Uh, I wanna just say to, to report on things that we have going on at the station here. Uh, beautiful station, we are celebrating this year five years, that's right, five years of broadcasting and it's just not a radio station and and I have to make that clear uh being the manager I have to make that clear to not only to the DJs to everyone that walks in Black Power 96.3 studios it's just not a station where we just going to play music and have a good time it's a station where we have to get the message out uh, by the chairman so I said it before some people teach and then there's the teachers that teach and then there's teachers that educate. The chairman is, is truly an educator, been uh, doing this for over 50 years now. We see this, we see the enormous, the enormous uh, growth in the Yuhuru house, uh, not only the Yuhuru house, the, the mission that he's on. And this radio station is gonna do everything in its power to carry out that mission. Uh, also with not only just broadcasting the chairman every Sunday at eight o'clock to 10 o'clock on, on O'Malley taught me, not only that, but every chance we get, I, I had a programmers meeting recently and I told my DJs and people that are volunteering here. And let me first, before I go there, let me give a shout out to all the volunteers because we cannot do this at the radio station without volunteers. This is essential that we have volunteers to come in. It's essential that we have a recruiting. Recruiting, it should be foremost and foremost on our minds, on our daily journey with making a revolution uh, real. We have to get people to come in, volunteers to come in, people to join the African People's Socialist Party, people to join AMWO, people to join uh, BIB. This is not only necessary, it is crucial that we do this. And so uh, for Black Power 96.3 FM, the volunteers, I want to salute his brother Chris, who is coming in and, and just came in like gangbusters, a volunteer that came and, and I'm telling you, he's doing a wonderful job taking Black Power Radio now that was mono now to stereo so that we can be heard on both sides of the speaker. And it also is giving us extra people that's picking up the radio. Cause sometimes if you're playing music and you only have a mono signal, then the, some people might not get it at all. So I think that's Conrad, uh, Chris for coming in and helping out Smokey the Bear engineer, making the music sound better and getting more programs and saluting those Conrads that come in and volunteer every day on a daily basis. Of course, I wanna also salute uh, Director Kile. I don't think uh, a lot of this would be possible without that Conrad, amazing job she does from, from not only a standpoint of the radio station, but a standpoint of uh, the Burning Spear newspaper, Adra Pra in a whole, Director Kile is definitely uh, the chief and editor. She's definitely doing what she has to do to forward the mission of the African People's Socialist Party and forward the mission of the radio station. Again, I'm reporting on the radio station because there's so much to report on. Last year, we raised funds and, and, and those funds that we raised, we also had a, a fundraiser prior in 2020 where we just barely made our funds. But I want to say uh, last uh, the year before, that was the year before, but last year we raised funds. We asked for $7,000 and we got up to, uh, close to $9,000. That's the growth of Black Power and that is 6.3. People are knocking on the doors. They are coming in. And it has to do with finding the sympathy. We all have to find the sympathy of what we are doing here uh, at the station and across the world and across the globe. We have to target people where they are and where they are, we target them and say, look, this is what is going on. We have a movement that says freedom, 
if freedom is not done for uh, everybody, then nobody's going to get it. We have to get that uh, message out. And I, I make it by, I made it my priority as being the manager of Black Power 96.3, my priority of doing commercials and, and putting out PSAs that is, that will say, Yuhuru, it means freedom. Yuhuru, get the word out. We gotta do this, it's, it's, it's meaningful. People need to hear this, no matter what we do, we gotta continue to say revolution. That's what we're looking for. That is what we're fighting for. If people say, oh, Ed, you got a wonderful job and I'll stop them, I don't have a job. This is not a job for me. This is a fight for me. I'm fighting for revolution. I'm fighting for reparations. And that's what Black Power 96.3 radio station has to do. We cannot just let this station play music and only music. Yeah, I like Luther Vandross. Yeah, I like Michael Jackson. But what I love is reparations for my people. What I love is the Yahuru movement. It's freedom for everybody. If it's not freedom for everybody, it's not freedom for nobody. And that's the way we have to do. At this radio station, if I'm going to be the manager, I'm going to manage a station. No longer a mom and pop station that the chairman is looking for. Chairman don't want no mom and pop chairman uh, uh, radio station. He wants a station that goes globally. And globally is what we're going to do here at Black Power 96.3 FM. International. And that's what we're going to do here at Black Power Dad is 6.3. I've already started by implementing the uh, local artists going global. A fantastic spearheaded program where local artists everywhere in this country can submit their music to this station and no other station has found it and perfected this yet, but Black Power has. We got people calling us from and sending their music from San Diego, California, Houston, Texas, uh, Canada, I can't name them all. Uh, North Carolina, uh, Miami, Miami, Atlanta, Orlando is too many to name. Overseas, a brother sent me a, a song from Africa, South Africa. This is what I'm talking about. And when they send their music in, they get their friends, their family, and their loved ones, download the app. Black Power 96.3 FM. And when they download the app to listen to their favorite loved one and their favorite artist, which is their cousins and nephews and mothers and fathers playing music, then they start listening to this station. And when they listen to this station, they start hearing the chairman, O'Malley Sotelo, bringing sun a Sunday morning, O'Malley taught me another O'Malley minute that we put in place here at Black Power 96, because we want people to hear. If you want it, people to, to fo follow the chairman, they gotta hear the chairman. So we're gonna do that continuously to play a uh, O'Malley minute, because sometimes, one minute profoundly from the chairman can last a lifetime. And I'm gonna say it again, one minute of the chairman saying something profound it could last a lifetime. Burning spear is the reading burning is in your mind. Put it in your soul, in your heart. One minute of a foundation, one minute can build a Yuhuru house somewhere else. This is what I'm talking about Black Power 96.3 studios are doing. We're getting the message out because it don't take a million people to make a million dollars and one man can give it to you. You gotta put it out there. Recruiting is what we're doing here at 96.3 FM. And I wanna talk about not only the, the things that we're doing on a good side, but some of the things I think we're self-critical at and that's not giving, getting enough PSAs out getting enough information out. I want to end that today. I heard a young lady yesterday and uh, on, the, on, on this preliminary has a song called uh, Step It Up, a Step Up, and beautiful song. Why is it not played on Black Power 96? Please, Conrad, whoever you are, because I can't think of your name right now, please send it to submit music at blackpower96.org. Again, submit music at blackpower96.org. I want you to write it down because I'm calling on all you Conrads to do the same. This is a radio station that is broadcasted live out of St. Pete. It's going across the world. You can take part in it. All you got to do is give me a clip. You got your phones. Record something. Record something profound. Give it to me. Send it to me. Contact at blackpower96.org. I'll submit music at blackpower96.org. I'll take it. I'll edit it, I'll put it on the airways so that somebody can hear it. Let's get it in somebody ear hole so we can get it in somebody mind, so we can get it in somebody heart, so we can get it somebody else to say, ooh, 
I wanted to join the African People's Socialist Party. Mm -hmm. Woo! I want to be a part of the Black Power Blueprint. Woo! I want to be a part of building a foundation of a revolution of a, not only a revolution. And did they hear that? They, somebody, Conrad, I, I, I see you. I'm the world's best blind DJ. I don't feel nothing, but I feel, I don't see nothing, but I feel everything is my slogan. I don't see nothing, but I feel everything. I feel somebody right now writing down this information. Submit music at blackpower96.org. Send me what you think we should play on the radio. So I have a pile of information to play to other people, other Africans all over the country, all over the world. And so we can get them to join hands with us, unite with building a foundation, an organization that has already been in existence for over 50 years, saluting the chairman O'Malley Yusatella again for 50 years of relentless, my brother has been relentless, mm -hmm. relentless. My sister, Ona Zene Yusatella, relentless is what I am. Relentless is what this radio station is going to be. Again, we're celebrating five years and we could not do it without you. We could not do it without volunteers, without people hearing the message of the O'Malley Sunday studies, O'Malley taught me Sunday studies, hearing the message of, of uh, the bullet, the, the battle, battle bullet. of the bullet by Malcolm X. We have to get involved with your radio station. I know a lot of y'all wear a lot of different hats, so do I. Hmm. I know a lot of y'all do a lot of things, so do I. Mm -hmm. But I just still want to make you give me a report, not a report, but a recording. Because it, it might be just your voice and your recording that might help some little girl or some little boy, which is our future. That's why I'm fighting. I'm not fighting for, for just only me. This is not about me. This is about my country. And my country is Africa. Mm -hmm. This is not my about my child, my, my son, Eric, or my son, Maurice. This is about another African child. That's what I'm talking about. Relentless. Is the word. And if you look up the word, I'm telling you, you look up that word relentless. I want you to look up that word. If you haven't done it, do it because it means a, it is a long line, a long line of explanation that goes with that word relentless. If you don't believe me, try me. I ain't read it. <laughs> I know it. That's what I'm talking about. Black power, putting out the message that we have to be relentless. We have to continue doing what we're doing. Our shortcoming is not getting enough people heard. And I wanna you know, tap on that because this is not just about a reporting of doing good. We gotta, we gotta report on where we fell at because if we don't report on where we fell at, how can we get better? And, and where my, my falling self-critical uh, is, is, is getting more people in, recruiting more, volunteers more because without volunteers it's hard to do the job that we're doing and we need volunteers here and abroad no matter where you are in the country watching this i count on you i'm looking for your support to volunteer to come on and join the black power blueprint come on and join black power 96.3 fm i can use your help I'm, I'm telling you i can i don't see nothing but i feel everything and i feel you coming on and joining this movement uh, the Yuhuru movement, the African People's Education and Defense Fund, uh, Impedum, so many, so many, and the wonderful work that's being done, we have to continue to do it, you know, and I want to thank and salute also Lisa Watson out of uh, Minnesota. I, I cannot be half of me without Lisa Watson, Sandy, Director Kile, and of course, again, I want to salute the Chairman O'Malley and Sotella for his uh, profound statements, for his found relentless work. This brother, I remember him when I was a little fella, and I don't want to, you know, make the Chairman feel old or anything, but the Chairman has been doing this forever, ever. And I don't know what kind of blood he has running through his body, but at times it has to be ice cold. At times it has to be a, a hot as fire. Because this brother has taken on everything that uh, uh, one man could take on and still take it on. So I just want to salute the chairman O'Malley and Satella because if it wasn't for him, I would not be here. And that's where we got to get other people to realize if it wasn't for, and, and P, I just heard Director Kile say it a few minutes ago and people said that we got to get him to the chairman, the leader of the African nation. I've been calling him the leader of the African nation ever since I got here. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't know who was the leader of the African nation, but to me, Chairman O'Malley was the leader of the African nation, but I don't know who they claim to be it, who, whatever, but no, Chairman O'Malley gets to tell her, in my mind, my heart is the, is the leader of the African nation. One nation, one Africa. I think I've ran over my time. I want to salute to everybody that's ever did anything to Black Power 96.3. Before I go, we have a, we have a fundraiser coming up and uh, it's gonna be held to February 27th through March 12th. Again, February 27th through March 12th, we're gonna raise funds with Black Power 96.3 uh, to help the African People's Education and Defense Fund and a blueprint here at 96.3 FM. If I'm talking fast, cause I feel like I'm running out of time, but I de definitely wanna remind you guys, February 27th through March 12th, we're gonna have a fundraiser and we're also gonna have a concert on March 11th at 7 p.m. I'm gonna be telling you more about that. And listen, download the app. If you haven't downloaded the app, please do that. It's free, absolutely free. Just go to blackpower96.org, look for the Listen Live and have a circle with 96, click it. You got the world's greatest blind DJ, DJ Eddie, and all the wonderful shows that are on there like Dr. Massimella used to be the People's War Show, now has changed to Black Power Talks and so many other reparations in action with Jamie. These Conrads, these, these fellas, are doing what's necessary. I want to salute uh, Dr. Massabella and Dexter and so many of them that working on Black Power Talks and Jamie Simpson, Jesse Neville, Penny Hess. Oh my God, the chairman Penny Hess, uh, the uh, socialist of the, I'm sorry, of the uh, Solidarity. Solidarity Movement. Yes, they are, they're just, I can't say enough about them being on Black Power Radio Station. Also, Brother Larry Faison, DJ in the morning with uh, the original Florida Spiritual Airs. Uh, so, so many shows uh, that's on their station. I also want to uh, uh, thank, thank you to DJ Heavy Love, who recently left and came back. And uh, Bruce, uh, Bruce Loves the Almighty has a show on Tuesdays. Just go to the Facebook page, Black Power 96 FM Radio. Black Power 96 uh, FM Radio, that's our Facebook page. And again, I want to thank each and everyone for listening to me. And, re and remember, Black Power is all about economic development our education, we have to get the great disparities out about all these things. Cause white people ain't gonna teach us that. White radio stations ain't gonna give that. Right, the Black Power Blueprint is one of a kind. Amazing station, station Black Power 96.3 FM. Turn it on, listen to it, tell somebody, paste it. Paste it on your Facebook page. Do whatever you got to do. Share, share, share. That's how we get the, the word out about the Black, Black Power Radio. It's a, it's a, just not a radio station. It's a movement within a movement. Black Power. That's what we want to do. And I, again, thank you for, for joining me today. And remember, remember my motto, be good to me. I'll be good to you. We'll be good together. Vanguard up. Vanguard Yuhuru. up. No, I want to send it out to Sandy, I believe. Sandy? Yes. All right. You heard her, Carrats. Woo. Mo fire. All right. Thank you, Mr. Eddie. And yes, now we're turning it over to Comrade Sandy, who will get into some of these details uh, regarding BP96. Wow. Wow. Salute and much respect to. DJ Eddy, station manager of Black Power 96. And I want to salute Director Akile Anayi, who's under whose leadership I work in my assignment to the party's Agipop department. I'm so honored to participate in this work under the leadership of the party as a member of the African People's Solidarity Committee, whose mandate it is to turn over all of the stolen resources, human and material, to the African Revolution as reparations. I salute our leadership, uh, Chairman O'Malley Shetela, Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shetela, the entire National Central Committee, uh, uh, APSC Chairwoman uh, Penny Hess, and of course, Black Power 96 Radio Station Manager, Eddie Maltzby. Uh, from the Uhura House in St. Pete, the party's Agiprop department is forging a new African internationalist radio broadcast network that promises to unite the African nation through the production and distribution of propaganda that's free from the threat of censorship by social media algorithms. Uh, next. Uh, the Uhuru Movement's first community FM radio station, um, Black Power 96.3, was launched on January 30th, uh, 2017, licensed to the African People's Education and Defense Fund by the FCC to broadcast in South St. Pete on the call letters WBPU. 
in his political report to the party's 2021 plenary, um, Chairman O'Malley um, called for Black Power 96 to move beyond the confines of a mom and pop style operation as, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, station manager had referenced. And this past year, uh, Black Power 96 has fought to increase its African internationalism political education content to expand its reach both locally and through national syndication, uh, to professionalize its operation through including, um, including through the implementation of the NTU volunteer program designed by Office of Deputy Chair Onisene Ishitela, and to expand its base of business underwriters and individual supporters. Uh, in the fall of 2021, Black Power 96 made a major leap forward with the promotion of Mr. Eddie Maltzby Jr., the world's best blind DJ, to the position of station manager. Uh, the elevation of Mr. Eddie to this leadership position shows how the party unleashes the genius of the African working class and arms African people to take power over the institutions in the African community, in this instance, to control the narrative that defines the existence and the future of Africa and the world. Mr. Eddy has demonstrated his talent and dedication to Black Power 96 and to the mission of the African People's Education and Defense Fund over the prior three years that he had served as a volunteer DJ, initially as the host of Good Morning Gospel and later expanding his repertoire to include the Midday Cafe and Smooth Grooves featuring blues and Southern soul. Uh, Mr. Eddy created the station's local going global contest that gives uh, radio exposure to, to unsigned artists. Uh, next. And here you see some of the 2021 winners. So hundreds of votes are counted each week, mostly from St. Pete residents, but also from listeners as far away as uh, New York, California, Africa, and the Middle East who tune in through the station's mobile app and web stream. Uh, back in 2019, Mr. Eddie had initiated an annual benefit gospel concert. Initially, it was held in person at a church in St. Pete. And then for the past two years, the concert had to go virtual because of the COVID closures. And Mr. Eddie expanded the musical genres of the station, uh, recruiting artists from around the country, gospel, R&B, Southern soul, and hip hop to donate their performances. In 2021, he booked the legendary Gerald Alston of the Manhattans as the headliner. Next. In the political report to the party's 2021 plenary, Chairman O'Malley called on Black Power 96 to strengthen its base of support, especially within the African community, which is a real source of security for the party's institutions. He said that Black Power 96 must, quote, win the sympathy of the people if we come under attack. And we remember that it was the community who protected the Uhura House during the 1996 Battle of St. Pete. We also know that attacks by the state can come in other ways, uh, legally, financially, overtly, covertly. And it's Black Power 96's service to and connection with the people that will ensure the station's growth and security. Black Power 96 is the African community's only voice on the airwaves, on the radio airwaves in St. Pete that speaks out against the colonial gentrification, police violence and denial of basic rights. Uh, prior to the pandemic, it was Black Power 96 that forced the city to back down and allow African vendors to set up on the South Side for the Martin Luther King Parade. And today the Black Power 96 is the voice of the Uhuru Movement's campaign to take back the Dome, the historic African district that was destroyed to build a sports stadium. Uh, Black Power 96's In Them Street segment uh, brings the voices of St. Pete residents directly from the streets onto the airwaves. Uh, next slide. And Black Power 96 brings African internationalism to the airwaves. So uh, the chairman's uh, uh, O'Malley Taught Me Sunday Studies are broadcast live. The daily political power hour features speeches by the chairman. And then interspersed throughout the day in between the popular music that's being played are bite-sized tidbits of African internationalist political education. So Mr. Eddy has initiated the O'Malley Minute that he re referred to, they spoke of, which are short quotes by the chairman, as well as the 14 point platform of the party, where each point is read by one of BP96's team of talented volunteers. Uh, we also have the monthly shout out uh, being broadcast that is a shout out to those supporters who are doing personal birthday fundraisers for the Black Power Blueprint. 
uh, a recording of the African National Women's Organization's advisory on dealing with child protective services, a recording of the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement's advisory on what to do when the police stops you, and regular updated advisories from Project Black Unk's COVID task force, courtesy of the African People's Development and Empowerment Project. So it really is the outlet for all the various components of the Uhuru Movement, and it's really powerful. Uh, in addition, uh, Black Car 96 airs two weekly programs that, that Mr. Eddie mentioned that dig deeper into African internationalist political education. And these two shows are broadcast not only on the FM airwaves in St. Pete, but are available on, on demand as podcasts. And so through that are heard by a worldwide audience. And that is Black Power Talks, hosted by Matsumela Odom and Dexter Mwangu. Uh, Reparations in Action is hosted by Jamie Simpson and Jesse Neville with APSC Chairwoman Penny Hess as its uh, frequent featured guest. Uh, next slide, or next page. Uh, this fall, the popular uh, People's War show begun at the start of the pandemic during the party's People's War campaign was rebranded in order to attract a wider audience and to make the focus focus of the show more clear to potential listeners. So it's now known as Black Power Talks and co-hosts uh, Matsumela and Dexter continue to produce a top-notch professional program featuring a wide range of guests and, and topics. Uh, this show brings African internationalist perspective on trending and important issues, not only to the FM airwaves in St. Pete, but to an FM and streaming audience around the world. The show is currently syndicated on seven radio stations across the U.S. It's carried on 21 podcast platforms, including the new African-owned Umoja radio app. And downloads of the podcast have increased by 300% in 2021 with regular listeners in eight countries, including Jamaica, Occupy Tanzania, Canada, the U.K., Australia, Germany, and Turkey. Uh, next slide, or next page. <clears throat> The station has seen a, a, a direct response from listeners in support of this programming in this form of an 18% increase in supporting member income in 2021 and a 60% increase in the number of supporting members. And that's really key. It's really important in showing the growing base of listeners who are one to invest in their own radio station. In 2021, uh, Black Power 96 also saw a 40% increase in underwriting revenue. Uh, coming from double the number of underwriters as seen in 2020. And this has come from uh, three main sectors, from neighborhood businesses, from live event venues as they are beginning to reopen, and from the gospel community with which Mr. Eddy continues to build strong relationships. Next page. So Black Power 96 is truly an expression of the genius and creativity of the African working class. Uh, the radio Black Power 96 thrives under the political leadership of Agiprop director Akili Anai, pictured here at an outreach table with Aliki Angoma, who has agreed to begin curating music of the Caribbean for the station. And if you don't know them already, here are some of the 2021 programmers whose voices, opinions, and musical selections you hear every week on the station. Uh, there's Norman Jalali Richmond, who began broadcasting with the Uhura movement on uhuraradio.com nearly 10 years prior to the launch of Black Power 96.3 FM. Uh, he hosts Diasporic Music with his co-host, Melinda Francis, who is not pictured here, and DJ Heavy Love as uh, Mr. Eddie mentioned, is back on Black Power 96 with his Southern Soul show, Larry Faison hosting the original Florida Spiritual Air show, and who is preparing to launch a new public affairs talk show, and BLAH, which stands for Bruce Loves the Almighty, hosts another program. So we want to salute the hosts of Black Power uh, Talks and Reparations in Action, also who were mentioned earlier. So all the tremendous victories won by Black Power 96 in 2021 are made possible by the work of a dedicated crew of talented volunteers. Black Power 96 has continued to partner with Burning Spear Media to carry out the NTU volunteer program under the leader 
and the postings of the volunteer positions for voiceover talent, studio engineers, grant researchers, and programmers have brought many volunteers into the station. Some have stayed for a short period and some are still with us, having increased their roles of responsibility in the station. A PIPSA, not, not, who is not pictured here, is uh, Black Power 96's youngest volunteer. She began her service as a voiceover talent volunteer about a year ago at the age of 14. Uh, she hails from Kuwait and has grown into the position of audio production coordinator, leading a team of volunteers to produce uh, public service announcements, underwriting mentions, and the party's 14-point platform. Mr. Eddie recruited, who he mentioned, uh, his longtime creative partner, Smokey the Bear, to the position of managing the station's music automation. And Black Power is uh, 96's most recent volunteer, also uh, saluted by Mr. Eddie, is Chris, who brings his engineering to help troubleshoot and upgrade the studio operations. Slide. So in 2022, the uh, Black Power 96 radio will uh, get back out there with in-person community outreach and live concerts. I know that, that everyone is just aching to get back out on the street in a, in a much bigger way. Um, the station also plans to develop new programming with shows on local issues, legal education, health information, and multilingual talk. Um, also, the station will be working to find funding and will find funding for staff for training programs for studio upgrades and the station is going to be in 2022 launching a black power radio network beginning with the contacts that were made through the syndication work of black power talks promotion coordinator dexter so as we can see uh, black power 96 is not just explaining the world it's changing it and now i want to pass it over to Comrade Matsumala Odom, the party's cadre development director. Uhuru. All right, Uhuru, thanks for that, Sandy. Um, uh, I'm Matsumala Odom. I am the uh, cadre development corrector, uh, sorry, director of cadre development uh, uh, for the African People's Socialist Party. The Department of Cadre Development is the newest office created under the leadership of Director Akile Anai with the direct leadership and advice of the Office of the Chairman in 2021. Uh, the creation of this office was the direct outgrowth of the mandates put forward by Chairman Omali Yeshitela. In the last plenary report, Chairman Omali Yeshitela mandated that the Department of Agitation and Propaganda create a program for the continued uh, development of agitprop skills throughout the movement. Uh, Chairman wrote, uh, all party organizations must have the skills regularly honed by Agiprop to carry out basic uh, Agiprop related work throughout our party, down to the unit level and within our mass organizations and general mass work. Agiprop training has to include uh, winning party members uh, to an understanding of how to organize uh, political discussions, Chairman talked about, debates, and other politicizing educational events throughout the African colony, especially the African working class. Ch Chairman also uh, mandated the regular study of 14-point platform. It is, in this, it, it is in this regard that we saw the creation of the army of propagandists, but we also moved towards the creation of a standardized 14-point platform study uh, that was um, coupled with a dynamic scorched earth campaign that plastered the African community with hundreds, if not thousands of the posters of our platform uh, throughout North America uh, and, and outreach information. So, you know, and, and I pass by them daily, they're still up there, which shows really the unity that the African community has um, with it, uh, as well as some of our uh, plastering skills. So uh, just if anybody wants, make sure you, you can, literally go out there just buy some of that wallpaper paste and they can't take it down so uh, uh make sure you hit the back end in front of it so um uh it's been up there for almost a year so let's change slides it is in this context that i was brought into the, uh, under under the leadership of the chairman and director Kile to create the office in two, in the spring 2021 i also believe that the black power summits played an important role in the creation of this department 
early in, in early 2021 before the second plenary of the seventh congress uh i directed the creation of seven regional black power conferences that in many ways offers uh for a useful structure and format uh, to the uh, creation of the regional mini intensives that regional agile prop coordinators and their committees will lead uh, in the year to come. Alongside this position, I also serve as the International Vice President of Impedum, as some of y'all heard, Black Power Talks podcast, as some of y'all heard, which is formerly the People's War Show, and I contribute to the Burning Spear. Now, my profession is an African internationalist revolutionary, but in my colonial job, I serve as a Black Studies professor. Uh, my position has allowed me to bring that skills that I've learned as a trained Black Studies scholar and historian to the study of uh, 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 to the study of party materials, um, uh, the writing, uh, the writings of chairmen, and the general love for the fifty-plus year history of the party and the movement. Uh, the universities and colleges play a crucial part in the colonial superstructure. Uh, many African scholars in the field. That I have, uh, that I work in, uh, have been agents for the ideological imperialist assault against African independent, the African independence movement. Some unwillingly, but many very, 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 very willingly. So, uh, in my classroom uh, and academic publications, I have challenged this assault and also introduced party literature and the writings of chairmen to thousands of students. Uh, I have created curricula and study guides to go with our works. We can see this in the circulation of, of, of a curriculum that uh, I created for the pamphlet of why I became a revolutionary, which is actively being sought by uh, hundreds of students right now from uh, San Diego State University. Uh, so, so giving us a good, good, good problems, right, to force these things uh, back into the in, 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 into print. Uh, but this war of ideas will not only be fought in the halls of academia, nor just by myself. It must be waged in every street corner, shop, prison block, you name it. Building the office to capacity will take, will place these skills in the hands of the African working class. <clears throat> uh, so, so working through a 14 point platform, uh, through they studied the 14 point platform, from previous cadre attentions, we had created the 14 point platform political education series and the, and, and the curriculum. Uh, the purpose of this curriculum was to standardize the knowledge of the platform, as well as equipping the um, comrades with basic knowledge of how the party works and the movement organizations. There's one way in which I really say that, um, you know, the 14 point platform really is, 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 is a handbook to uh, African internationalist principles. There's 14 points. People ask you, so what's your position on women? What's your position on reparations? What's your position on X, Y, and Z, right? So, so, so this isn't just like, like road memorization, wow, that sounds cool or whatever. Uh, th this is actually, it actually forwards the practical work and arms every single person in, in our movement with the ability to take our ideas out into uh, uh, the public. I know I'm going script, going rogue, everybody, going rogue. You know, reel them in, reel them in. No, but seriously, y'all, because um, I don't think it's a coincidence that in 1979 the party platform uh, 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 was was created, and it's at that time that uh, a young, I think she was 19 years old, 18 years old, uh, 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 Demisha Blacker uh, had traveled uh, all all the way throughout Europe, uh, uh, armed with a, 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 an understanding of the party uh, platform. And that's what allowed for um, uh, the Desi Woods campaign to grow and eventually uh, so the, the basis of, for, for even the African Socialist International. So this isn't a small thing, right? This is central to the work that we do. So after the platform and the main ideas, there are three to four multiple choices, choice questions and four, and four discussion questions. These can be done with rapid fire uh, and, and can be the basis of, or can be the basis of, of, of extensive study. Um, we can see evidence of the effectiveness of this study uh, in other parts of the work uh, and also in the articles submitted to the SPEAR, as well as the continual regional study that's taking place in the South right now. So let's change slides. So the 14 point platform, as we talked about, is connected to the political education regime. We can see uh, this in the connection between the 40 point uh, platform outreach campaign and the spear studies and uh, some known as the studies on a stoop where from San Diego to St. Louis to Philadelphia, we see party members and mass organization members holding actual studies 
actually in many places right where the 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 the, the platforms have been placed into into public uh, a, a light. Uh, we reorganized the army of propagandists to going back to our mandates because previously really the army of propagandists was something through which we were using to uh, really just monitor spear cells and stuff like that. But we went back to the mandates of body. Uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, so, so, so this committee uh, 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 now has representation from every region of the party with the, with the exception of Africa and the Caribbean. It's still in its infancy. The political education uh, regime reinforces the use of the standard party agenda. Uh, 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 the correct functioning and structures of the party and democratic centralism, uh, uh, it helps create a culture of political education. So uh, now to the last slide and to the, and, and the way forward, but you don't have to change it. It's right there, no, no, no don't change it, don't change it. It's, it's, um, so, so, so building the office to capacity. Uh, as noted, uh, we need to build this office and uh, regional committees to capacity. With the 50th anniversary and the 8th Congress fast approaching, this is imperative. From the international to the regional level, these cannot be one person shops. Some of the positions needed specifically are administrative assistant slash assistant project manager, a burning spear archive research assistant and study guide development assistant. Comrade Julius from the Southern from, from Southern California uh, has been brought into the de, uh, Department of Agitation and Propaganda. He will be, uh, he will help expand this work with his skills. Uh, at this uh, plenary, the Department of Agitation and Propaganda will be presenting a resolution uh, for the regular study of the 14 point platform. Uh, an army of propagandist leaders have been tasked with creating a schedule of quarterly mini intensives that will take place in 2022 as well. Uh, the Department of Cadre Development has organized an ar archive intensive in St. Petersburg for the Army of Propaganda Leaders that will uh, aid in the reproduction of the um, of, of reparations now. Lastly, uh, 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 the Cadre Development is not a think tank, right? So that's what's different, right, than, than what we're doing in other places. This isn't a think tank. The ideas and education produced here are meant to be placed into action. For this reason, we will plan to establish increased links between cultural development and spirit writing, blurbs and urgent new topics, decentralized and democratized spirit writing, as well as links to outreach uh, campaigns, uh, uh, how to organize debates, discussions, political education throughout the colony, and even literally to just, to just how to how to pull together using the party platform of the Revolutionary National Democratic Program, uh, a, a speech on the fly. Um, that concludes our cadre development report. Now I wanna turn it over to comrade Maiza to deliver the NTU volunteer report. Ahuru, ahuru comrades. And thank you comrade Masamela for the intro. As stated, my name is Maiza Knopp. I am the Recruitment and NTU Volunteer Coordinator for the Department of Agitation and Propaganda. I want to first extend appreciation in abundance to my leadership and who is leading us all in this fight for total liberation and unification of the African nation. Chairman Omali Shatella, who is responsible for us all being here before you today. Salute to Deputy Chair Ona Zanea Shatella, who in parallel brings African internationalism and self-determination front and center. I want to also salute um, the National Central Committee for their profound leadership and my leadership in this department, Director Akile. Um, I've also, um, as I've gotten more acquainted in this role, I want to, um, that I've been called on to do, I've been able to better process the way the NTU department must function in order to provide our volunteers with the greatest experience and skill development opportunities on the globe. It all begins in the area of recruitment. The recruitment at NTU department had a very strong year in 2021. We've engaged, um, we've gained some very solid and driven volunteers. Our diverse team of volunteers are located globally all across the world and work remotely and very well collectively. We've worked with forces in Kenya, Nigeria, Kuwait, Brazil, and various places within the US. 
Our volunteers have shown great determination in carrying out the work it takes to see a liberated and unified African nation. Our volunteers are truly the heart and soul of our organization, and they display great leadership when taking on tasks and strike with precision every time. You, you and I see, the, uh, you and I across the world are able to witness their amazing work in every issue of the Burning Spear newspaper that we receive each month, and we should. Um, and we also are able to tune in by radio and podcast to Black Power 96 FM and listen to the hard work that is put in to reach our listeners all across the airways. Um, I believe I should be going to the, no, not next slide yet. Um, in Agile Prop, we had um, the goal to recruit two major positions, both in the biggest institutions in our department that was the station manager for Black Power 96 and managing editor of the Burning Spear. We've um, we've done both. We have done both, and then and then some. We want to salute these comrades who went above and beyond, earning their promotions inside their prospective areas of work. First, we have DJ Eddie Mosby, um, who was promoted to station manager for Black Power uh, 96 Radio. Next page. Here we have Comrade Apipsa in Kuwait, who at just 15 years old has assumed the role of the public affairs producer for Black Power 96 Radio. Then we have Comrade Soliana, who started out with us as a proofreader on the Bernie Spear. She received several promotions as senior proofreader, production assistant, and after just six months united to join the party. Shortly after she was promoted to managing editor of the Spear, and is already managing uh, production, um, managing the production process. Next page. And we increase um, the training capacity of the spear with the promotion of comrades Kota and Honey Bloom as senior proofreaders. These comrades will be able to train and um, train incoming proofreaders and evaluate their work in order to strengthen their skills in this area. Uh, great work, comrades. Um, here um, you will see the flow of the NTU process. Um, this gives a clear visual of what our finalized online and on the ground recruitment and outreach process looks like moving forward with onboarding our volunteers. So um, what you see before you is the first steps in creating the job descriptions and then posting them to useful volunteer recruitment sites. Those volunteer sites are also, um, also consist of local colleges and universities of our students. The uh, following step happens once the recruitment department get, uh, receives an email and the volunteer, uh, from the volunteer expressing their interest in the open positions. We, um, then we send them an orientation invite and that is done through Calendly um, where the volunteers then book their orientation day and time. Once the day and time has been selected, the volunteers will receive reminders two days prior to the and the day of the orientation. The fourth process is after the uh, su uh, success of the orientation, we provide the volunteers with all of the needed information of what um, the next steps will be and as, they're, as they are assigned to their department team based on their inquiry. Um, as an extended measure of recruitment, we, will, um, we are in the process of, of creating an orientation packet to provide our volunteers with some um, great follow-up content um, that is seen um, within our NTU orientation video about our mass organizations. The final step as the facilitator is to send volunteers information status um, to the department staff to prepare the team to welcome our new volunteers who have gone through the NTU process. Those um, departments fall under Black Power Media and the NTU program. Um, that would be the um, Spear staff, the uh, Black Power 96 radio staff, the web and IT team, publications team, grants team, Black Power Talks podcast and the NTU Brigade and Committee. This process has won us 15 volunteers in the last uh, 
last year and a total of 43 requests already so far this year um, that we've invited into the um, NCU orientation process. Next page. Once our volunteers are introduced um, to their um, area of work, we ensure um, uh, we ensure a consistent process for their development. We provide um, our, we provide our volunteers with African international list development through political education, which tops the agenda for every meeting. Training development, um, training and development in Black Power ninety six, providing hands on. Um, assignments and giving them feedback on the materials that they produce, increasing the skills in audio production and or programming. And we train and develop our, um, and in training and development, our, we have a training session in areas of the Burn and Spear newspaper. Um, and those training areas are how to sell the spear, how to write for the spear, copy editing and proofreading. Uh, next page, oh, wait a minute. Nope, you can go back, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So <clears throat> we put a cap on 2021 by hosting our second annual end of year volunteer appreciation celebration where we um, celebrated our volunteers um, for their hard work. We initiated a volunteer, um, we initiated a volunteer of the year award and recognized all of the nominees and our winners. We took home, um, those who took home the titles were Cardella in the Web IT team, a Pipsa in the Black Power 96 radio, and Soliana in, um, on the Bernie Spear uh, staff. And this year we are instituting some helpful um, new department policies in uh, the next, next page, I'm sorry. And this year we are inst uh, instituting some helpful and new department policies to ensure that we have um, good staff and volunteer practices. We want to always acknowledge that our volunteers regularly and provide um, exceptional staff and volunteer transparency. Um, we intend to do this with our assessment forms. I've developed um, because we want to hear from our volunteers. We want to hear their voice and what they have to say about their experience, you know, with the department. Um, and again, sorry. So we want to hear our volunteer voices. Um, and that has, I'm sorry. Well, that is just really to create that transparency transparency between the staff and volunteer communication and to be sure that we are providing our volunteers with all of the tools that they need to enhance and to meet their volunteer expectations. I want to also, um, I have also developed staff communication forms that will be submitted as needed as, um, and will also be, we will also have a quarterly all department pull together pull together meeting to assess our current capacity and recruitment needs so that the volunteer program reflects this. The NCU department will also be initiating on the ground outreach, seizing recruitment opportunities um, and in-person events. We will be developing literature um, for the Department of Agitation um, and Propaganda department members and regional agitprop reps to take out to win forces to the to win um, I'm sorry to win forces to volunteer for these in institutions. Our on the ground outreach will also include a student strategy, um, which seeks to target schools and their volunteer opportunities, inserting um, our institutions as a place where students can contribute their time and skills. I am also tasked with building the NCU committee to its capacity. Um, so we can accomplish all that we, um, all of our re recruitment goals for the year. Um, so that will conclude the NCU recruitment report. And I will now turn it over to comrade Lisa and Cindy for the economic development reports of the room. Uhuru Maiza, thank you so much. And the question of economic development for the department of agitation and propaganda and Burning Spear Media is an important political question. 
it means that the party must have the resources to speak on behalf of and in the interest of the African working class and the African revolution. Burning Spear Media is the voice of the international African revolution. Adjuprop is the Ministry of Information for the African Workers Socialist State. So the African working class must have the resources to control the production and distribution of information to the masses. As past political reports have stated, next to the Office of Deputy Chair, Adjuprop has the most potential for raising resources when we understand the importance of who the party is, what the party has to offer, with the burning spear, the books and publications, the broadcasts and presentations by the chairman and party leadership, the political line of African internationalism that answers the questions people have today about how the world got to be the way it is. Adjapov has at least seven revenue streams under burning spear media and more under Black Power 96 radio. So I will be talking about some of the revenue streams we focused on building this year. Next slide. In 2021, under the leadership of the Office of Deputy Chair's Grants Committee, Agitprop applied for eight grants and began work on one other application that was submitted in early 20, 2022 to fund projects, including one, a book publishing project, two, an oral history project, three, Black Power 96 radio staff and station improvements, four, digitizing materials from the archive, and five, a Black Power history project. We want to salute the Agiprop department members who contributed to the grants work this year, um, Director Akile, Comrade Matsumela, as well as the NTU volunteers, Anessa and Soren, who worked under the leadership of Sandy, who coordinates the grants committee for Agiprop. Four of the grant applications were denied, and five are still pending. It is also important to note that the grants executive committee leadership did raise struggle with APSC's work in this area for not following democratic centralism and protocols related to timelines. And APSC members in Agiprop united with this struggle and are committed to following all protocols and fighting to win grants for the party's department of Agiprop. Then um, in 2021, we focused on ways to increase income for the Burning Spear newspaper. And we saw the potential to grow the subscription program, but first had to upgrade our systems to be able to deliver the Spear to subscribers consistently each month. And so that was done in June. Subscri uh, subscription sales did increase by 60% compared to 2020 as a result of that. Next slide. Burning Spear Media held the annual Black August fundraising campaign, including a powerful online event looking at the Burning Spears newspaper coverage over the years of political prisoners. This campaign was used as an opportunity to relaunch Burning Spear Media's donor campaign, including sustainers and one-time donors who support the Mufundi Lake Prisoner Subscription Program and Burning Spear Media overall. This year's campaign increased donations by over 600% compared to last year's Black August campaign, However, we did have a big goal and only got 70% of the way there. So we summed up that we need more promotions and outreach to reach beyond the movement's current base. And that is totally winnable and doable because the prisoner subscription program is something so many people would want to support. And so the Burning Sphere donor campaign will be continuing to promote and build that program. Another goal was to increase publication sales. Promotions efforts included a holiday promo campaign and launching live sales, which we plan to continue at least monthly. And as reported in the Burning Sphere publication section, publication sales increased by 20% in 21, uh, 2021 compared to 2020. So we think that increased promotions contributed to, the, to that, although there is so much more we can do in the way of promotions. Next slide. For Burning Spear Media in 2022, we have the goals to continue developing and expanding the existing revenue streams. This includes one, grants, two, increased Spear wholesale distribution, that is Spear sales through our movement distributors and the regional work, three, 
wholesale book distribution, getting the chairman's most recent books listed with wholesale catalogs so that it's easier for bookstores to stock the books on their shelves. Four, steer subscriptions. We want to double subscriptions in 2022. Online book and product sales. So publishing, promoting, and selling reparations now, developing new products that promote African national identity, posters, greeting cards, many other things. And trying for new one new product per month, including the books and pamphlets that we talked about in the publications report. Um, six, the donor campaign. So to hold the Black August campaign and build the capacity for promoting that, doing more outreach and improving our donor appreciation and stewardship. Seven, your ads, growing the advertising program. Eight, um, to develop a new revenue stream based on the valuable materials housed in the Burning Through Media archives. This is one way that Burning Through Media can go to the money sector um, through auctions and collectibles markets and the many universities who, you know, you know, they have to have the sphere and party historical literature in their libraries and digital collections. And there's already, you know, some, some universities have, have done that already and it's in demand. So we need to reach and expand that. Um, next slide. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, the same spread. Um, then for Black Power 96 Radio, um, one, develop the Black Power 96 revenue streams, including the donor campaign and underwriting, um, two, the grants for Black Power 96 Radio, and three, recruitment to support economic development. Next page, please. And then I'm going to talk briefly about two things that are key to supporting the economic development goals, recruitment, and then the website's revamp. So the priority positions we're seeking to fill to support the economic development goals for 2022 include, one, coordinators for each of the revenue streams mentioned in the goals, two, promotions and marketing coordinators for one, you know, at least one for Burning Through Media, that side, and then one for Black Power 96 Radio, um, We'd love even more than that, but, you know, um, three product development coordinator um, for publications, including people to do product research, um, volunteers who could work on researching logistics and costs as we um, come up with ideas for products. Number four, graphic designers, five, video production, and six more web team members. And then um, on the right side of the page there, another key objective is to support economic development is to complete the, the website revamp that we've been working on, the burningspear.com and burningspearmarketplace.com. Um, the goal of that pro those projects is to make it easier for visitors to use those websites that distribute the Burning Spears content and that, and that sell the books and other products. So we have two dedicated skills NTU volunteers who have been working on this project this year, that's Joseph and Cardala. And we are also welcoming Iquan to this team. And it's a big project. It involves migrating the legacy of over 2,500 online articles that have been published on the Burning Spear website since 2007. And we are 80% of the way towards launching the sites. We've gotten through a discovery phase, which was surveys to understand the needs of five different user groups. So you, some of you may remember taking that, those surveys um, then comparing different platforms to put the new sites on. So we um, compared several of those and made some determinations. And now we're in the phase of building and testing. Um, so we're aiming to launch the new e-commerce site in March and the new site in April. The new site, the new sites will provide a better user experience and more modern tools for the Agipop forces who keep the sites updated and who fill orders. And they will support economic development in multiple ways, including increasing traffic to the sites, which will support the Spears ad sales and donation programs and will increase product sales. So I would now like to turn it over to Director Kile for our report's conclusion. Next slide. Uh, for real. So um, I think that pretty much says it all that, you know, this department and these comrades have been relentless. Um, but our work to recruit into secondary leadership, professionalize our processes, train party and movement members in how to be a propagandist, and increasing our reach has characterized the work of Agiprop this past year. 
And while we still focus on those things in 2022, we will be rapidly working to resolve the outstanding issues from, the 20, from 2021 and before. What we can say for sure is that the work coming out of Agiprop has changed. There is a real struggle and commitment being made by the leaders of this department to do what is necessary to ensure its success. There is no denying that we have much work ahead of us, but it is in recognition that Agiprop doesn't just play an important role right now. We are laying the foundation for our future as an arm of the African workers' social estate. So with that, comrades, Uhuru, we are relentless. Thank you. Uhuru, thank you for such a powerful report on the party's edge prop. I was, you know, such an honor to be part of it and, you know, a salute to the team, people that I work with every day. It's honestly an honor to be part of the team. Um, there were so many comments and, you know, questions that were blowing up the Zoom chat while the report was going on. So I'll read some of them, but it's a lot. <laughs> um, we have Monica Soria on Zoom who said, salute to those generational members and to the party that may be older than some of these members, the party for fostering and nurturing black power for the future and beyond. Um, APSP occupied as Anya chair, Tavari Mulgari writes, you can tell this comrade is a brilliant DJ. I'll download the app and see if it works for, for settler colony South Africa. Uh, he also said Akile is a great leader. Um, and then on as an age, I said, I unite chairman Tavari. Um, what else? Uh, comrade Halley writes, um, Black Power 96 was the first institution I donated to when I joined USM in 2016. It was so amazing to see it really get built. And the next time I visit, visited the, the St. Pete Uhuru House, there was a studio fully furnished, built from an empty room. The Uhuru movement does what it says it's going to do. Um, DC owner wrote, we love you, DJ Eddie. Um, comrade Mwesi wrote 2022 plenary is lit. Um, yeah, just a lot of that. <laughs> and um, in terms of questions, okay, there's one from uh, comrade Monica. I think talking about chairman's work, she asks, does that include peer reviews and academic journals so that those writing master's thesis or any research have to properly cite the chairman and his theories? So I guess if- <coughs> uh, Can you read again? Okay, does that include, I'm not sure to what exactly, but like, it's probably part of your presentation, I'm not sure. Um, does that include peer reviews in academic journals so that those writing master thesis, master's thesis or any research have to properly cite the chairman and his theories? Uh, yeah, oh, sort of in this war of ideas. Yeah, um, you know, uh, what we've noticed that uh, just in recent years alone, there's been at least like a dozen references to chairman uh, his writings, that there's Af African internationalism uh, inside uh, uh, many of these, these these texts. There's a book that just came out last year or so that uh, uh, focuses heavily on the Desi Woods campaign, this other book called uh, Ratchetdemics or something like that uh, by a guy named Chris Embit, uh, which uh, uses chairman's ideas uh, and cites them uh, for his, uh, his own pedagogy, his own st uh, strategy of teaching. And so, so, and, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I, for myself alone, uh, as well as, you know, placing these ideas out in the world, uh, there are some, some plans towards uh, contending uh, 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 with, with some of these misrepresentations uh, 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 and, and things like that. And, and um, like you said, uh, with the peer reviewed uh, stuff, I mean, some of the stuff has already been out there. You know, uh, like I said, um, uh, I found uh, some of Chairman's writings many, many years ago through the writings of a guy named Rod Bush, uh, who had uh, written about Chairman uh, in, in, in his works and cited Chairman in multiple uh, uh, articles um, as, as well. And, and, it's, and, and like I said, this is really about uh, contending with the way in which the um, uh, the colonial superstructure and by way of the uh, uh, of the academies has been used to to silence um, uh, uh, the anti-colonial uh, 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 tendency that was present uh, during the African Revolution of the 1960s. You know, uh, placing this sort of analysis of race um, and, and race this and racism uh, uh, at the center and then training Africans and then sending those Africans back into the African community to tell everybody that their fight is against race and racial formation and all this other stuff. Um, 
uh, uh, but 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 I do think it's an, it's it's important as much as possible for us to uh, take this out there. I mean, one thing I'm doing just this week, you know, I've got a class uh, at the University of San Diego where we're reading um, the Spear. We read the Spear once a month, you know, at least once a month, and then uh, we um, we're reading a colonialism as a mode of production um, uh, uh, to place that into the hands of the students, and then. You know, the ones who really unite, send them back into the other places so that they can wage these struggles. When someone tells them, you know, race is, race is the structure of society or something like that, they can say, well, Molly Echetela says, you know, um, uh, colonialism uh, is, is, is the base to which we're struggling. And race is just, the racism is just ideological justification uh, and stuff like that. So, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, Monica, I've known Monica for, for many years now, and uh, that, that that's a... Uh, an excellent question, and, and I think we're really just trying to arm uh, the cadre and 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 also the work that you do, comrades from Union do. We know that so many Africans find their way to the party and to the movement by way of the revolutionary work that um you know our our, our Mexican indigenous comrades do here in San Diego and point them towards uh toward, towards the chairman and stuff like that as well. So, yeah. Uhuru, thank you for that, uh, Matamala. We have another question from uh, Comrade uh, Halley. She asks, is there a plan to make audiobooks of Vanguard and overturning the culture of violence? I would know, I know I'd like to have that. So Uhuru, yeah, Uhuru Halley, thank you uh, for that question. Um, Cause I, that's not the first time we've heard that request. And um, I think that uh, among a lot of things that Adjaprop will be you know, tasks to produce, but also just coming up with different things and finding different markets uh, that, and there are so many um, because what Agiprop offers is totally unique. Um, and so just investigating, you know, the process and in, in doing that. And uh, one of the things that we're doing, what we said in 2022, some of our major work is going to be recruit into the economic development areas, the revenue streams, donor development, and also um, product development which would include, I think, audiobooks, because they would have the responsibility to investigate how to make it happen, getting the budgets, and, and then carrying out the project itself. So um, I think that among a lot of the things that we already we needed to have created yesterday, um, audiobooks will be definitely one of those um, things that we have to look at uh, seriously. So I know that we will be publishing at least two uh, Reparations Now book and um, republishing a new edition, and um, also we'll be publishing the uh, political report that the chairman presented this year um, uh, to in, in, in an actual book form as well, which will include some special features like photos. Some of the photos we've seen um, uh, displayed here regarding the 50 year history will be reflected in that booklet as well. So I know those two things we will be publishing this year. And in terms of audio books, um, yeah, we'll definitely keep that in terms of the products that we need to look at and, and figure out how to carry that out. Because as you mentioned in the chat, it's, you know, this huge, you know, thing that's out there available. I know I, anyway, yeah, I, I get into the car, my dad's playing audio books <laughs> instead of music. So um, yeah, it's definitely a niche that we have to get uh, crack. So thank you, Hallie. For sure. I know I would like to have an audio because that is a well. Um, but that's it for questions. Just one more comment from Comrade Nia Binga to close it out. He says, Uhuru, this is the most dynamic edge of prop has been in my time in the movement. Salute to Comrade Director Akile's leadership. So there we go. Uhuru, have. if I may, I just want to salute Comrade Binga, who is on this AV team. Binga, near Binga, the, um, the radio station, the studio is named after Comrade Binga. And I just gotta say, he left some really big shoes to fill. I'm trying to, I'm trying to wear them. Um, but I just really wanna salute this comrade as well. But thank you to uh, my uh, department members. Um, also uh, to wanna salute and recognize Comrade Nyindu um, out in Fort Myers, Florida, who is our photo editor, but he is a veteran member um, and part, was one, a member of one of the founding organizations of our party. Um, so just salute to all of you. And again, recognize and salute my leadership, Chairman Amalia Eschatella, Deputy Chair Onazine Eschatella, and the entire Central Committee. Uhuru, comrades, thank you so much. Uhuru, Director.